Hello everybody, I'm Bang and I play games, and this is my guide to advanced controller play for Final Fantasy XIV. A few disclaimers before we begin. First, this guide is not a direct instruction manual, but rather a series of tips. I don't expect anyone to take this info and convert their setups to be identical to mine. Make this your own, just take the tips that I have and use them to enhance your controller play. Second. Final Fantasy XIV is a game where neither control style has a significant advantage over the other. Each has benefits and each has downfalls, but neither are so large that one is better than the other. If you perform well on keyboard and mouse and don't wish to play on controller, that's great. There's no need to change. If you dislike playing on keyboard and mouse but feel you're not up to snuff on controller, then this guide's for you. Hopefully these tips will help you to tweak your own setup into a more efficient and more powerful setup. To illustrate my points, I have placed a quick controller overlay on top of the gameplay to show my button presses in real time. This is to show what buttons I'm pressing as I demonstrate different aspects. With that said, allow me to outline this guide. I'll be putting chapters in the video for each section. If there's a section you already know, feel free to skip ahead to the chapter that can help you. Our first section is going to focus on system settings that can tweak things to allow the game to support controller play a bit better. This section may seem a bit unnecessary, but I've seen several people trying to make the transition from keyboard to mouse to controller, but they're simply hiding hotbars and showing the cross hotbars in the HUD menu. Our second section will focus on the cross hotbars themselves. First we'll cover theory, then we'll address the more advanced setup. Our third and final section will focus on the other aspects of controller play. Some examples are movement and targeting. On to the guide. When starting the game, you're asked if you won't be playing with a keyboard and mouse or with a controller. This seems like a logical question to ask, but your choice matters. Depending on your choice, several settings will be set to accommodate the style you choose. The brilliant thing, however, is that Square Enix has provided a toggle switch to switch all of these settings at the same time when you want to change back and forth. To access this toggle, you simply open the character configuration screen. On keyboard, this can be accessed by pressing the K key. On controller, press your menu key, hit left to access system, and then select character configuration menu. Keyboard and mouse players, this happens much faster for seasoned controller players than it seems. Uh, I'll demonstrate that right here. Very, very quick when you get used to it. In this menu, you'll have a large toggle switch in the top left corner. That changes all the settings from keyboard and mouse to controller. It's the same as, as choosing controller in the very beginning dialog when you first start the game for the first time. Toggling this to controller has a multitude of effects. The most noticeable effect is hiding the hotbars and activating the cross hotbars, which we can see down here. Toggle this, and we have hotbars. Toggle it again, and we have cross hotbars. I do have an extra hotbar here. Uh, don't worry about those, those are not related to the controller. I use a secondary controller for pedals. Uh, it's just a personal preference thing. It's not needed by any means, so just ignore that part. The second thing you're gonna notice is that movement has changed from standard to legacy. Uh, on mine, it is not. This will retain what you have what you had changed, la or what you had saved last. So right now we put keyboard and mouse movement to standard. If I switch back, it switches back to Legacy. Uh, I use, I occasionally play with keyboard and mouse and I use Legacy on both. The last big change is that most default keybinds are either changed to require a control modifier or just outright disabled. Uh, in their place, direct chat is enabled. This allows players to just start typing into the chat at any time by pressing any letter key. This is done because controller players must place their controller down to type, so saving a second is important here. The next two settings are extremely important. By clicking the hotbars menu within this same window, then the custom tab, we have two settings here that are specific to controller play. Expanded hold controls and enable WXHB. 
WXHB stands for Widened Cross Hotbar. I highly encourage any controller player enable both of these. Alongside this, I encourage you to also select Enable Directional and Action buttons under the WXHB setting. In the same menu, you can also specify which cross hotbars are activated with these methods. This menu here. We'll cover both of these more later. Now on to cross hotbars. These are the bread and butter of controller play. The cross hotbar is designed in a manner that makes playing an MMO both very engaging but also very fun and intuitive. The standard cross hotbar has four sets of actions on in a cross pattern. They're separated in the middle with a line. The actions on the right are activated by pulling the right trigger and the actions on the left are likewise activated by pulling and holding the left trigger. Once activated, by default, the right cross actions are used by pressing the face button in the same direction as the action, and likewise the left active cross actions are used by pressing the D-pad directions that correspond. In character configuration, you can also toggle to have all the face buttons on the right and all the D-pad actions on the left. If you prefer that, by all means use it. I feel it's confusing for many players. For the theory part of cross hotbars, this is where everyone will have a different approach and everyone's approach can be valid. My approach is as follows. Right trigger focuses on combos with face buttons being my single target combos and D-pad being AOE. On Reaper, we have my slice, waxing slice, and infernal slice on the A, B, and X. My AOE is left on the D-pad and up on the D-pad. Right on the D-pad on a right trigger pull is always a stun. And then down I use for other utilities that are commonly used. In this case, I use it for Soul Slice, which builds my Soul Gauge. Left trigger focuses on offensive utilities. Raid buffs, OGCDs, ranged attacks, offensive potions, etc. So, I have Soul So, which is used as a pre-pull. I have Arcane Circle. And then you'll notice I also have Plentiful Harvest and then the main raid buff in Shroud. In my pro widened cross hotbar on the right side, I have extensions to my primary damage. An example on Reaper, uh, which is my Savage main, by the way. I have the Bloodstock combo, Grimswath, Gluttony, and the buttons that correspond with those and the Enshroud combos. So, we can see all of my Enshroud stuff on the, on the widened cross hotbar on the right. On the left, I focus on defensive utilities and any kind of extra buttons that need to be placed. Nearly all jobs follow this same formula as much as possible. Some jobs, like Dragoon, can't because of various reasons. Widened extended cross hotbars are a means of doubling your existing hotbar to allow for another 16 actions without changing hotbars. Technically, these actions live on a second hotbar, but it's easily and quickly accessible without actually changing hotbars. To access these actions, you quickly pull, then release, then pull and hold one of the triggers. When executed properly, instead of activating the current hotbar, you will activate the widened cross hotbar that is selected in the menu until you release the trigger. The other option we enabled at the beginning is expanded hold controls. These actions are activated by pulling and holding one trigger, then pulling and holding the other trigger. Both must be held the entire time and one set of actions is activated by starting with the left trigger and the other set of actions is activated by starting with the right trigger. I do not place any job specific actions on my expanded hold controls hotbars. Instead, I have these set to activate cross hotbar 8 left and right. 
And then I have cross hotbar eight shared across all of my jobs. This is done by clicking the sharing tab in the hotbars menu. And then just turning on sharing for the hotbar that you wish to use. On these hotbars, I place actions that every job is going to use, such as teleport, return, sprint, limit break, chocobo companion actions. They're all easily accessible. Uh, my mount roulette. And uh, every job is going to use basically all the actions that are placed there. Uh, I also have duty actions there, even though there's another way to, to utilize those with controller. It's, it's default to the game. The end result of all of this is 32 buttons specific to each job and 16 buttons shared across all jobs without changing hotbars one time. Uh, the only instance where this may not be enough is when you're macroing multiple variations of abilities. An example of this could be when a tank wants to have the Blackest Knight macroed for each party member and have a different button to press and not have to target party members to use this. It's not necessary, uh, especially on controller where party targeting, in my opinion, is much simpler uh, and can easily be weaved in between GCDs. And this brings us to the final chapter of the video. As I mentioned at the beginning, when you toggle between keyboard and mouse, your movement style is changed from standard to legacy. To sum up this change, standard is akin to tank controls, which were popularized by most survival horror games back in the day, like Resident Evil. You move forward, you backpedal when moving backwards, and you turn in place without moving forward or backward. Alongside this, you can strafe left and right. Legacy movement is more akin to a 3D action game. When you press a direction, your character turns and begins moving in that direction. This movement is relative to the camera. The camera's own movement is also altered. Instead of being locked to the shoulders of your character, the camera is put on a loose follow setting. If you're running straight ahead, the camera simply follows behind you. As you turn, the camera will loosely follow behind. If you happen to run directly toward the camera, it will remain static unless you, you're running slightly off center where it will notice that and adjust. This is where the first real advantages come in between the control styles. Controller players benefit from a quick turnaround for gaze, at, gaze type attacks by simply pushing the control stick away from the target. Alongside this with free camera control, players can easily view anything going on around them while moving and doing mechanics. On the other hand, keyboard and mouse players benefit from slightly more accurate placement of ground targets and activation of player directional abilities. Controllers suffer from a lack of perfectly accurate movement, but again, all of these pros and cons are very minor. The final aspect of controller play is targeting. And folks, ground targeting on controller just sucks. We'll demonstrate it here. Let me get some... Ground targeting on controller involves moving your camera to look where you want the ground target to go. It's hard locked to the center of the camera and camera movement is slowed down slightly while ground targeting. That's the biggest drawback to controller play that I've found since 2.0. Enemy targeting, however, is a dream. I know that keyboard and mouse has tab targeting, which is essentially the same as holding a trigger and pressing a shoulder button, but it's so useful for us. Alongside that, when you set up target filters properly, you can quickly target the closest appropriate target in front of you for the context. Have your weapon out. The A button targets the closest combat target in front of you, if you have no target already. Need to target a player in a docile setting? Sheathe your weapon, look at them, press up on the D-pad, and then left or right, depending on if they're slightly left of you on, on the camera or slightly right. Need to target a party member? Up and down will cycle the party list in order. All of the D-pad targeting is sub-targeting. 
While sub-targeting, pressing the A button will change your primary target to the sub-target. Otherwise, activating an action will set off the action on the sub-target and then change your target back to the primary target. This means actions like shirking your off tank can be accomplished by pressing down on the D-pad twice and then activating shirk. This can be easily weaved in a window between GCDs and doesn't interrupt play, though it might require a little bit of practice. And that's about it for the advanced controller play tutorial. Hopefully some of the information given in this video has been helpful. Again, I don't expect people to just adapt my controller style, but instead use this information to enhance your controller play. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I only recently switched from Twitch to YouTube and I'm trying to grow this channel. I stream just about every evening and would love to see my chat filled with fans from Final Fantasy. One last thing off topic, this past Sunday, I held a St. Jude's charity stream. For a small channel, I had high hopes but low expectations. I just want to give a shout out to all the people who stopped into the stream and a huge shout out to those who donated to St. Jude's Children's Hospital. My expectations were absolutely demolished and while the amount we raised was humble, it was still enough to make a difference in a child's life. Thank you all for coming in and being generous. If anybody wants to jump on that train, and help support St. Jude's. I've left the campaign active and the link is in the description of that live stream. That stream's title is Raiding and Raising. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you all live.